Hi, welcome in one more episode of uh, that course of business planning. This time we are going to work in this section on planning your operational financials in your business plan. Because there is a lot of material to present for me uh, in the form of a video lecture, in this activity, in this section, as in a few others, I split my teaching into two separate videos. One with, let's say, the theory, the instructional, and another one with the demonstration of planning operational financials. As regards my own business concept, it will be the same business concept which I have been working with uh, throughout the last seven activities. So the business concept consists in manufacturing small wind turbines and small and small hydroelectric turbines to create small installations, small power installations based on uh, renewable energies. Uh, so I go into the PowerPoint presentation. This is the first video of the two. So this is the instructional one. I, I will present here the basic theory uh, or the basic assumptions and principles of uh, what exactly you are supposed to plan your operational financials. Now the demo, so the second video, will be important, very important, to the extent that there I show on like a real life case and real numbers the logic of this all. And I, by experience, uh, by uh, or from experience which I have uh, with my students, I know that uh, it is really important to see precise examples or real life examples in order to really understand those mechanics of finance in a business. Okay, so we go into the slideshow, into the presentation uh, entitled Your Operational Financials. First, I present something which I labeled the short story. Uh, in the visual part of the slide, you can see at the bottom, you can see apples. And uh, uh, on the top, you can see a bottle of cider. Uh, cider is made out of apples through a transformation, through a process. And the idea is that the cider contains some value added. So apples, which were the raw material, let's say the, the starting point, plus some value added together make cider. That's, that's the general idea. And now how this general idea translates into uh, the operations, into the operational financials of your business. Uh, the concept is that your operations uh, should generate a financial surplus. Your operations essentially consist in doing business, right? You do business by doing transactions, by closing and consuming deals with your customers and with your suppliers. And the idea is that the total set of transactions which are your operations, should generate a financial surplus sufficient to, first of all, cover the capital cost that results from the loss of value in your fixed assets. Your technology will be wearing down physically and will be inevitably getting obsolete as newer, more modern versions thereof will turn up in the market. So you need that capital expenditure called uh, amortization to cover that loss of value in your assets. Then you need to cover the interest uh, you owe on your financial liabilities. And on the top of all that, you want to make profit, you want to make money on that business. So that basic financial surplus uh, which you generate on your transactions should uh, give you, on the top of amortization and interest, should give you like an income after tax sufficient to 
fulfill your ambitions and sufficient to make yourself a living, right? Uh, so that's the general idea. So in the first place, you need to generate that value added. And planning your operational financials largely uh, focuses on understanding how you will generate that value added and how to adapt the fixed costs of your business structure to the value added that the market allows you to generate. So now the basic logic of gross margin. Gross margin is, let's say, the accounting name we commonly give to, uh, uh, to precisely the economic concept of value added. Gross margin is value added or expressed in money. So here you can see the first line of that slide, the, the upper line. I have price at which I sell my things multiplied by quantity which I plan to sell and that makes the revenue of my business, right? On the other hand, whatever I want to sell, usually I need to put some unitary variable cost in what I sell. If I want to sell cider, every bottle of cider consumes some variable unitary cost which I just need to spend if I want that bottle of cider to be there ready for sale. So this is the second line, this one, uh, of, that, uh, of that slide. So I take that unitary variable cost or VC of one unit of the product and I multiply it by the same quantity, so by the same output I want to sell. And this uh, arithmetical product, so unitary variable cost multiplied by quantity, gives me the direct variable costs of my products sold. And the logic is that I take the revenue, from that I subtract the direct variable cost, and this is my gross margin. Uh, you will notice, I develop on it in subsequent slides, that we have like a common factor in the revenue and in direct variable costs, the quantity of goods I want to sell. Huh? It is like a, both an economic wisdom and a financial one, that I need to calibrate my entire business structure on the quantity of goods I want to supply. Okay, let's go further. So, how my gross margin works in my business? Maybe if I go to the bottom here, it will be more comfortable for you to follow. So, I take that common factor, so the quantity, and I express my gross margin as quantity Q multiplied by the residual difference between the price P and the unitary variable cost VC. So essentially my gross margin, so that fin uh, the size of that financial surplus on transactions which I generate in my business depends on those two factors, on the margin of value added I have in my price and on the size of output or the volume of output I have. That gives you, uh, that, gives you that basic idea that operational efficiency of your business depends on those two variables, your margin of value added, which can be also expressed as a percentage of the price, and on the size of operations, on the volume Q. And your gross margin can be interpreted as the reward, as the economic reward you get for maxing out on both of those variables, on value added and on sales. Now we pass to the logic of operational income, also known as operational profit. There is no aka. Okay, excuse me. Uh, 
one remark as for all the, let's say, all the accounting and financial part of this course. This is something for which I feel like getting a little bit bigger in the window. There are two words, income and profit. They both mean the same. It is the margin, the financial surplus, which you are left with like at the end of the day, at the bottom line in your operations. It is that surplus that you are left with and you can do whatever you want with it, right? And uh, income, let's say, is more of a legal term. Profit is, let's say, more finance and economic, but they are essentially synonyms. Okay, let's go into it. So the logic of operational income or operational profit. In your business, if you want those transactions to run, to go, to if you want to be able to uh, generate that value added on transactions, you need to have a business structure in place, something that works. You need people, you need equipment, you need some premises, so a place where your business is taking place precisely. So you need a business structure and that business structure costs you money, costs you a certain stream of fixed expenses per month and per year. These are mostly various types of rent, rent, for example, for the warehouse, for the office, for server hosting, etc. And the second most important part of those indirect costs, fixed indirect costs, are salaries of many kinds. The salaries which you pay to your employees or salaries or let's say fixed fees of, uh, that you pay for outsourced services. An example is accounting, especially in small uh, startups, in small businesses, accounting is outsourced to an external entity, to an, uh, to an accounting house. And the accounting house essentially does the job that an in-house accountant could do for a wage. But these are those two groups of fixed indirect costs. Rents of various kind and fixed salaries. Now, here is an important sentence in red. Fixed costs can be seen as the price you pay for maintaining your business structure in operational readiness and working. This is one of the so-called barriers to entry in every market. You can discover very quickly that when you want to enter a given market, a given business, you just need to put that minimum of money in, in the, into the creation and maintenance of a business structure in order to be able at all to do any business. And now gross margin minus fixed costs gives you your operational income. And uh, what I want you to practice in this activity is to figure out the fixed costs of the business structure you want to run. Try to think what kind of business structure you need to keep your business running and what would be the expenses, the current fixed expenses of that business structure. Uh, there is a hint here in the first bullet point, usually the annual rent for any type of real estate, would it be office space or a warehouse or a factory or part of a factory, usually in relatively stable real estate markets, the annual rent corresponds roughly to 10% of the market value of that real estate you are renting. So you can consider, just as I am considering it in my business concept, for example, to buy that real estate in, in, instead of renting or leasing it. Then you need to put much more money up front, like the full market value of the real estate. But on the other hand, after, war, after you buy that real estate, you don't have to pay the rent, right? Then ask yourself how many people you need to employ what will be their wages, consequently, what will be the total payroll to pay per year. And now, an, a really important thing. 
go through that figuring out many times, simulate many scenarios, try really to understand the connection between the operational and functional attributes of your business structure on the one hand and the amount of fixed costs per month or per year that it, it will cost. I want you to understand in that practice that concept that fixed costs are the price you need to pay in order to maintain an effective and efficient business structure in the business, in the market. And once again, this is bloody important because business plans fail very frequently because they figure out their or they don't figure out correctly their fixed costs. Either they, are, they underestimate them or they overestimate them, but it is really important at this point. Now we pass to a, a concept which is called the break-even point. Mm -hmm. The question is how much output, so how much Q will you need to, to turn up or to turn out in order to finance your business structure? So here is the procedure I want you to follow in your practice. Take the prices you figure out in market research. You can refer to the previous section on marketing to see how you can conduct market research. Now there is something which can be called the rule of thumb. You can make a simulation where the unitary variable cost makes 50% of the price you sell your goods at. Usually that proportion between uh, the variable unitary cost and the price varies between like 30 and 60 percent uh, and 50 percent is like a reasonable median value you can assume. So knowing that the unitary variable cost the VC is equal to half the price calculate your operational result as shown below. So price times quantity you take 50 percent of that it is your gross margin and from that you subtract fixed costs and you do it with whatever quantity Q comes to your mind. Just make many simulations with many alternative values of quantity or values of Q. And through those simulations, figure out your so-called break-even point, which is expressed or explained here in the last bullet point. So figure out the quantity Q which gives you the equality between gross margins and fixed costs or in other words which gives you this condition one half of price times quantity minus fixed costs equals zero that quantity this specific volume of business is your so-called break even point a very important term in business planning uh, you can be like sure and certain that when you are pitching your business plan to some investors and when you go past like their first uh, reluctance and uh, when you have like gained their interest, they are bound to ask you, OK, we more or less understand the business concept. So now tell us what is the break even point? You need to know it. And the last slide of theory. Uh, you can adopt an alternative procedure. Uh, you can assume that you don't really know what uh, your fixed costs will be. You don't really have a precise idea of what the business structure should be. So you reverse engineer your break-even point and your fixed costs. You, in such a case, you really need to do your homework with the market research. You really need to nail down very like, reliably, first of all, the prices, second of all, the quantities that you realistically can expect to sell, given like a path of entering the market. And finally, you need to nail down empirically your uh, margin of value added or the variable cost that you will need to pay for each unit of product that you turn out. Here a hint once again. Uh, 
the unitary variable cost usually sums up to the price of some intermediate goods you need to buy from external suppliers. So if you want to do market research, which allows you to figure out precisely your margin of value added in the price, you need to search uh, your technology and your suppliers so as to figure out what exact kind of intermediate goods you will need to buy from external suppliers and what is their price. That will allow you to calculate that margin of value added. And once you have price, quantity and unitary variable cost nailed down, you calculate the gross margin per year that those like market given uh, benchmarks allow you to generate. You assume that from that gross margin, you need to take at least 20% for uh, expenses uh, or for values other than the fixed cost. So for you need to take that 20%, at least 20% for uh, providing for the amortization of your equipment, for the income you want to have at the end of the day and so on. And then you calculate as in that red, uh, red fonted formula, the max fixed cost. So the maximum fixed, uh, fixed costs you can allow is 80% of the gross margin. So 80% of Q times the residual difference between price and the unitary variable cost. This is a way of calculating your fixed cost as an allowed or possible maximum. Okay, that would be all in that theoretical part of this specific section devoted to operational financials. Now I invite you to follow the second video with a practical demonstration of that planning as applied to my own business concept. So, see you later, see you later excuse me, in the next video.